Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you to continue creating history of internet and free culture in Barcelona. And I'm saying writing history because Barcelona has been a protagonist in this history. Recently, we could go back to the Free Culture Forum organized by Xnet in the same hall on the 30th of October 2009. And on following years, up until 2015, has been bringing to Barcelona the main debates, discussions, and the main proposals, such as this pilot project that you're now developing on free software, free culture, digital democracy, neutrality of the network, elements we will be talking about in this course. We will also talk about, I don't know where Ignasi is, but in this same hall on the 1st of October 2004, the Catalan and Spanish version of the Creative Commons license was presented, the license that you all know, the most important ones, and that Ignasi La Bastida from that year on is president of Creative Commons in Spain, the Copyland Sessions 2 that were developed that same year in April here in Barcelona with the main experts and activists, worldwide activists. But I wanted to go back even further. That's why I'm starting with this screen. I w wanted to go to the geophysical year, International Geophysical Year, 1957. That year with that scientific, unprecedented scientific effort, Barcelona welcomed and hosted the International Astronaut Congress in its 57th edition from the 6th to the 12th of October. If you start remembering all those years back, what happened around those times that we could truly say that casted a shadow on this Congress. Well, the 4th of October 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. I think this was hell for any Congress organizer, an event that is filling your agenda and your events become um, an event. Well, the scientific community in the U.S. started thinking about how to recover their world leadership. So they created, four months later, on the 7th of uh, February 1958, ARPA agency, a NASA, uh, NASA agency. ARPA agency is commissioned with the... and security communications networks in case of attacks. Paul Baran, in this paper in 1962, establishes the differences between three types of networks. This is a classic Simona loves. Centralized networks, very vulnerable if the center is attacked. The decentralized one, there's no single center, there's several centers, and if one collapses, that area would shut down. And the distributed networks, but I thought we should work towards to, and they're very resistant to attacks, and through a complex architecture that he suggests, but there's still no implementations of uh, pack mutation dividing the message instead of continuous flow and distributed into different information packs, this could be the best one for military communications. This agency has billions of dollars, and when GAFAMs talk about entrepreneurs, we should know that and it's important to know who implements this to some scientific research projects in the US. The Stanford in California, the Stanford projects where I'm following years, Douglas Engelbar, we can see here on the picture, he developed a lot of technology with lots of hackers that amongst all these things try to avoid the war in Vietnam. Everyone went to the war, but you could not go to the war if you worked for the government. So we see all sorts of people working here in Engelbar on the 19th of De 9th of December 68 presents some of the advances his group has been working on. 
So I want to show you a short clip of that presentation that is recorded live. You are watching the first keyboard in history. Engelbart is talking about the importance of dividing and separating the monitor from the panel or dashboard. It's the first time. And it is commanded by a single person. A presentation of a project with military funds, and we can see that in front of the huge computers managed by specialists and technicians, any human being would think a world of, but now all computers work or can be worked by a single person. And this person in a conference in San Francisco said, that when I finish this, well, my wife says that when I finish this, I should prepare my shopping list. And that's what he's doing now. He's writing bananas. And what do I need to get? Carrots at the fruit shop. He uses the computer not to calculate anything. It just becomes a tool to organize information. This is what he's doing. This is one of the shows that he does with the presence of the military who have financed all this. So we should see clearly that one thing is who finances and the other ones who work on it. And Engelbart wants to stress the importance of computers for the day-to-day -day life. Here we can see a type of open street maps where he establishes the route of what he needs to do after the conference. What did I need to do in the library? I think my wife needs to take two books back. So everything is organized here. We are seeing the first sample of personal IT, an IT at the human scale that responds to the commands of a single person and that this person is using for their day-to-day -day lives, not to kill the Vietnamese. No, that's fine. We can hear the rumor or background no noise. This is the video call, 1968. We've done lots during the pandemic. It is true that it's not done on the internet. It's done through TV, through television. But this is the first shared document. And so, the special thing, if I label 13, will switch. Two ratones que empiezan. Two masses that start working on the same document for a shared document in 1968 at the end of the conference. You can see the two mouses there. <coughs> there is a colleague in Menlo Park and another one in San Francisco. They are sharing the same document with the pointer, with the, both mouses, and they are working collaboratively. So we can see that we not only are talking about personal IT, but also an IT that wants to collaborate remotely. This are some of the key elements of this conference. And I think it's very important for us to remember this for when we have uh, or talk about the cloud, because we know what the cloud is. Here you have some maps. We can see them closely. We see the world distribution here. We have the cloud, so we can get closer to our cloud. When we have the cloud, we're going back to the model of very powerful computers to which terminals are connected. We've spoken about video games too in the Artificial Intelligence Lab. Um, in the Rolling Stones paper, they talk about Space War. Space War is the first widely distributed video game in history, and this is the uh, Rolling Stone article in 72, and this is the end of the article. Appendix 2, your own space war. So what do we have here? This is the source code, the first widely distributed 
video game in history is freely circulating. Everyone has its, their own version. So this is another source. And I will also talk about interconnection because in 1972, having connected some research centers in the US, the challenge was how to connect lots of international scientific networks, but other types of institutional culture language networks too that were very different. Here's when we start debating about the problem of the internet and in the face of um, Robbie Kennedy being said that left power to um, communication operators, who were distributing the pack commutation, Luce Poussin, this French engineer, which is not as known, inspired a system that will be imposing and the TCP IP will be based on by Mark Anderson for the World Wide Web. A World Wide Web with open protocols that allow for the explosion of the web we'll know about. So. It ends with this quote by Marta Peirano of a heterogeneous network, markedly distributed, that takes power away from the state or corporate institutions that want to centralize the network. Marta Pirano says the new internet problem was not a software or hardware problem, it was a government problem. They needed a code that was a hinge between both institutions, but that could keep nodes connected. TCP, the original proposal, provided power on operators in this management, and in Europe it was monopoly of the state, too much power. So this was designed not providing more importance to more information over other. Also, the most recent history had proven that good intentions were not enough and they were not coded in the foundational system. And we had to plan for what had not happened and for the worst. Poland's solution was a protection against political changes, life and death of great companies, and the passing of time. So let's continue making history of internet here in Barcelona and democratic digital education. Thank you very much.